You know, lock. Go. God damn it. <laughs> Hello, guys. What's up? Hope you're doing great. I'm Diego, and this time we're gonna react to episode three of season two of The Legend of Korra, which is called Civil Wars Part One. So, as a recap, Korra and her guidance. Basically, in the last two episodes, we've seen how Korra has been distancing herself from past parental figures. Tenzin, and now this time in episode two, it was Tonrak, her own father, in order to favor her new guide, which would be Unalak. It would be her uncle. And although Korra may be perceived as being bratty and kind of like too angsty towards Tenzin and Tonrak, I think it's pretty understandable her behavior given the fact that she's been lied to her whole life about this secrecy and and just being treated like a child even though she really is not anymore and she requires to progress in new ways to explore the world Tornrak in the last episode for example he patronizes her and it seems like he doesn't believe in what she's capable of and Unilock can give that opportunity to Korra and Korra is looking at that is looking for that but the thing is that I really don't trust Unilock as this ideal guy just because Korra's journey now is supposed to be spiritual and that leads me to the second point spirit portal open now what we saw how Korra opened the portal basically with physical force as the avatar in the form of the avatar but there was no really spirituality involved in the opening of that portal at, at at least that what, that's what seemed to me. And I think it's pretty convenient how Unilog just tells Korra shortly after the opening of the portal about this whole conflict between the Northern Water Tribe and the Southern Water Tribe. I think there's some weird plan going on. I think it's very intriguing for me, to be honest. I'm liking the season so far, even though it's just I'm just like going into the third episode. So grab a cup of tea and let's watch it. Huh. Hmm. What other plans do you have, bro? It's just giving me Tarlock vibes. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay, just really violent treatment right from the beginning. Ooh. Now that you've opened the southern portal, we need to protect it from people who would do the spirits harm. I can protect it. I need you for something more important. Uh, there is another really? In the north. Another portal in the north? Spirits and man will be able to move freely between the north and the south in a matter of seconds. But the solstice is over. How am I going to open it? Yeah, that's right. Now that you've opened the southern portal, your energy is stronger as well. I really don't like that look from Kunalak. The world will be united again. I don't trust. It sounds like this... The speech of, from, of equality from Amon, I don't know, it's kind of manipulative, I think. I am the solution. <laughs> I haven't felt this at peace since... <laughs> and it's over. Patience. Patience, Tenzin. Patience. And I've really enjoyed having you two around. Reminds me of all those great vacations we took as kids with Dad. Uh, I think your memory's a little foggy. It was always just you and Dad. Oh. No, that can't be right. Oh, so Ang wasn't the greatest father of all time? Wasn't the father of the year? Oh, remember Ember Island? <laughs> we never saw the place. I could have sworn. I suspect he preferred Tenzin just because he was an airbender. She ran away. Honestly, I don't know why you kids can't just get along. <laughs> I'll find her. Commander Boomy reporting for duty. Search and rescue missions are my specialty. Why do you feel like you're drunk, bro? Unalak's already booted our chieftains out of their palace. How long before he starts telling us what kind of cookies we can eat? <laughs> She's such a diva. <laughs> Got a cargo ship full of halibut that's rotting thanks to this harbor lockdown. Who wants to buy a ship full of stinking fish? Seriously, it's not rhetorical. I need to sell these fish. <laughs> I, love how he, I love how he tones down and is like calm. <laughs> The only spirit I'm interested in restoring is our spirit of independence. Am I right, people? Yes. That's a cool use of the word spirit. I'm not gonna lie. If Unalak doesn't pull his forces out, then we have no choice but to fight for our freedom. <laughs> what do I feel like he's the kind of guy that just speaks and does nothing? <laughs> Maybe you could speak with your uncle. Tell him how frustrated we all are. He'll listen to what the Avatar has to say. 
Okay, yeah, that's what's gonna say. Why don't you tell him? But yeah, Korra makes sense. We need to start preparing for war. Is that serious? <laughs> I hold immense dislike for the South. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> what the frick was that? You know, I'll be really sad when you have to leave. It's been really great getting to know you. <laughs> You don't even believe that yourself, bro. Marco! I'm so happy to see you. Uh, you alright, bro? No! No, 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 no I can't <laughs> take it anymore. Listen, I don't want to live in icy bliss with Eska. Then just go away, bro. Just don't. If you're that unhappy, just break up with her. Break <laughs> up with her? You could do that? Yeah. Like he did with Asami? Just tell her you're not that into her anymore. <laughs> so cold like that. You just gotta rip it off and get it over with. You'll feel a lot better afterwards, trust me. <laughs> Thanks, Mako. <laughs> I'm lucky you're so good at breaking girls' hearts. <laughs> He's the best. Breaking relationships 101 with Mako. That's a class I would enroll for sure. I would get it. 100. I understand why you brought your troops here, but I'm afraid it's sending the wrong message. Terrible message. There was a meeting at my parents' house. A lot of Southerners feel like their tribe is being invaded. Mm -hmm. Obviously. I'm uniting. Not invading. Mm, really? If the water tribes were at war, the other nations would take sides. The dark spirits would thrive off this negative energy, and the world would be thrown into a battle between spirits and man. I'm not, I'm not sure if to believe him. He's just very good at words. Maybe Tenzin was right. Maybe I'm not ready to be the Avatar. Tenzin lacked faith in you. But I have no doubt you will become the most admired avatar the world has ever known. Is that the point of this? Being the most admired avatar? I'm afraid Korra is not being guided properly. Obviously it's, there's going to be tension. I mean, it's... Yeah. I mean, they're kids. They're kids. Come on. Yeah. We're kids. Korra, what you gonna do? You're all part of the same tribe. Start acting like it. You're taking their side? We thought you were one of us. Ah, uh, that's that was a risk. Hey! You are the worst avatar ever! Ooh. Is that gonna be like a theme in this? Being questioned as the avatar once again? Is that gonna play into her insecurities? Korra. I Korra! Is she gonna get like that idea in her head? Like, am I am the, I the worst, worst avatar ever? ever? I'm, I'm, I'm worried about that. Iki, where are you? Over here. Dad. What the frick with Iki? <laughs> Just kidding. It's me. <sighs> the funny, funny, funny uncle. Haha. <laughs> I wish I could be as good a father as Dad was to us. Tenzin, your problem is you're exactly like Dad. Oh. So focused on saving the world and doing his duty. Don't laugh. That he never had time for us. Got it. Okay. Okay, I see the resent. Time for you though. His precious little airbender. Yeah. Favoritism from Ang. You seem to have some grandiose delusion that we had a perfect, happy go lucky childhood. Guess what? We didn't. Funny how we're exploring those dynamics between brothers and sisters. Or just brothers, you know, it's dysfunctional kind of. About to go to war and I'm supposed to stop it, but will anyone listen to me? No. And I didn't ask for my father's help. Can't he just let me be the avatar? Marco, just listen. Just empathize. Do you want just or am I just supposed to listen? Yes, just I'm listen. Still not clear on that. <laughs> How about you take a break from all this avatar stuff and we go out for a quiet dinner? Just the two of us. That could help. Yes, this. Th okay, thank you. But okay, what's happening? Why? Oh my god. <laughs> Worst. This fun? Worst. Worst choice, choice ever. <laughs> Five of us. So fun. Really? This... <laughs> oh, that's the... <laughs> the image that I use? I didn't know that it was from this episode. <laughs> that's amazing. Love it. What happened to ripping off the leech? I tried! But anytime I bring up the subject, she threatens to freeze me in a block of ice and <laughs> feed a dolphin piranhas. Have some courage, man. I'm very bad at reading people. You should know that by now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that moment in episode 5 and season 1. Uh. 
Oh. Did Dad send you to talk to me? Your father doesn't know I'm here. We haven't seen anything from her mom. I found out Dad's been lying to me my whole life. Yeah. Unalak told me everything. How Dad and Tenzin kept me trapped down here while I trained. How Dad got banished from the North. Yeah, she has all the right to be mad. <sighs> we were trying to keep our family together, to give you a normal childhood. <sighs> I never wanted a normal childhood. All I ever wanted to be was the Avatar. But everyone keeps holding me back, even my own parents. Unalak's the only one who believes in me. I, I completely understand where she's coming from. The situation might be out of your control. Varric's been plotting a rebellion against Unalak. He asked your father to join, and... Dad is part of the rebellion? I don't know. Oof, okay, oof. I'm getting caught in the middle of it. It's too late, Mom. I'm already in the middle of it. Oh, that, that conversation gave me chills. That was great. Like, I can envision it as a live-action oh. moment. What? Oh, 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 what's happening? Hey! Hornrak, are you really kidnapping your own freaking brother? I I doubt Unilak is totally a hundred percent good guy, but Tornrak, you're not you're not helping me out here. Dad, don't do this. Turn around, Avatar. <sighs> said you didn't see anything. No. Leave Unalak and go. Yeah, obviously he's she's gonna have some bond with Unilak over here. Oof, 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 Cora. Don't enable your dark side, please. We're all part of the same tribe. I don't want to hurt you. Yeah, this is this, this, this doesn't make any sense. Why are you fighting? Nice moves. Yeah, <sighs> cool. <laughs> okay, that's pretty cool. Is it really Tarnrak? Is it really Tarnrak? Wait. He wouldn't help us. He's a traitor, just like you. Oh. Okay. Okay, I'm yeah, sorry, Tarnrak. <laughs> Find Varric. I want him to freeze in prison with the rest of these traitors. My God, no Varric. Let them stand trial for what they did. Every Water Tribe citizen deserves that right. He was gonna go like straight up to violence. Where were you after Dad died and Mom was all alone? You two have no idea how it feels to have the future of an entire culture on your shoulders. <sighs> Oof. Yeah, it's a pretty... That's what it's always been about. You think you're some savior who has to carry on Dad's legacy. Who else is going to do it? Funny how that word is coming back, savior. I can't be around you two right now. Go back to the temple and see if Iki returned. I'll keep looking out here. Fine. 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 Ugh. Wow, that false idea of childhood that Tenzin had really affected it really affected the whole relationship between them. Is it okay if I come in? Of course. We heard what happened. Are you okay? Oh. I'm so glad you weren't there. I don't know what I would have done. I had no idea how far Varric was willing to go. My brother and I have our differences, but I would never attack him. Yeah, that would, that would have been so weird. And for all the pain I've caused you and Mom. I'm the one who should apologize. After I saw the Southern Lights return, I was so proud of you. I never should have held you back. Thank you. Thank you. We knew one day the world would need you. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't need us anymore. Mom, Dad. Of course I still need you. <laughs> We weren't expecting you. Tanrak, Senna, you are under arrest what? and will stand trial. Trial? For what? What? To assassinate me. Oh my god. Unilock. Go, Go frick, frick yourself. yourself. It's just giving me that Tarlock feel, that vibe. He is not really 100% reliable. Damn it. Unilock is not doing any favor over here of being able to trust him because he is going to arrest Korra's mom and dad. Okay, that was episode 3, Civil Wars Part 1. It's noticeably a part 1, of course. What I really liked about this episode is the parallels 
of the storylines that are being handled over here. Just a word coming back over here in this season, Savior. We see how Korra as the Avatar herself she sees herself in the obligation to step up, be some kind of savior to this whole thing. Even though this whole conflict between South and North has been as told by mom. Well, told by mom. <laughs> I'm saying like this is my mom, no. <laughs> told by Korra's mom has been going on for many years. And all that Korra wants is for this to be over. You know, like overnight. But that's just not how things work. I really liked also how Tenzin, on the other hand, with Kaya and Mumi is being questioned as, you know, being like the preferred son among them, like seeing Aang as, you know, someone who really had some clear favoritism among his children. And that wasn't healthy at all for the the way they grew up. All that attention to Tenzin, I feel, it really fed that idea of taking charge of his culture, of his ways, and making sure it still lives. That just may be a little bit just too grandiose, just like Kaya said. I think it's really interesting. Those philosophical debates, you know, about being the savior, we saw that in season one with Tarlock and Amon and even Korra herself. I also loved those family relationships dynamics for example well between tenzin kaya and bumi really that false idea of childhood that tenzin had really made him disconnected totally from how kaya and bumi grew up i think kaya and bumi like really lacked a brother in tenzin just because of how ang raised them and i think it's really interesting in terms of like themes, how that is actually somehow kind of mirrored in Korra and the way she is being treated by her family and what society expects from her. Because I think by far the best moment of this episode was that really serious conversation between Korra and her mom. I think that just really summarized how Korra feels like deeply limited, restrained, and she wants to be not held back at all she wants to like really be herself just do wh what she has been wanting her whole life being the avatar and not living a normal childhood like she said because she's not destined really to live a normal life even and in that sense i understand Cora's mom and Cora's dad actions i'm really glad that by the end torak apologized i really felt for Cora in this episode i think Cora in this episode I think this was an episode of actual character development or getting to know more of Korra, her state of mind, her emotional boiling things that she's feeling, you know? I think those theme parallels were like the highlight of this episode by far. I think I am going to leave what's like the plot really itself for the next episode for part two because this is really just like the half of one storyline. I know there were some kind of jokes over here with, you know, Bako and Bolin and... Oh, Mako, please step up with your listening skills because you're not really... You're not... You're not doing your best. Come on. Otherwise, I actually enjoyed this episode mainly because of that. The themes that were trying to be developed over here. And that would be it. Thank you so much for watching. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you want more content like this, please give it a like and you may want to subscribe if you haven't yet. I also do movie reactions as well. So if you want to, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm going to leave the link down in the description box and we'll see each other in the next one. See ya!